Microsoft Surface event just wrapping up, and uh, one of the new things uh, that they were talking about, James, the Surface Neo. So just start with the obvious is, what is it? The Surface Neo is a foldable tablet, and that that's a decently unique idea. <laughs> it's something that they've wanted to do for a while. Mm -hmm. In 2009, there was a project at Microsoft to make a foldable tablet that was run by one of the co-founders of the Xbox project, mm -hmm. Jay Allard. And that was something that they experimented with for a while, and by 2011, the, the entire project wound up being canceled. And then the first Surface, the, the non-bendable one, mm -hmm came out in 2012, so that was a little bit before they were really fully in on hardware, mm -hmm. but this is something that not just Microsoft, everyone's been trying to do a dual screen Windows device for a while now, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have not done particularly well. Acer had one that was kind think, of gigantic. <laughs> what did you say, five pounds, I think, is about something like that. And Asus had one that was really interesting called the Tai Chi, and it, it looks like a normal laptop. When you open it up, it's, it's just a normal laptop, but they bolted a screen onto the top of the lid. And that, I think, actually had two different iterations, maybe three, but it doesn't seem to have sold in enough volume mm -hmm. to keep doing it. Trying to do this at a software level, you have to have custom extensions because it's not built into Windows necessarily. So that, that modality had never really been proven as something that people want. Mm. And now, 10 years on from Courier, the original Microsoft project, they're trying to do it again. And this isn't like the Galaxy Fold. It's not a curved screen. These are two independent displays that are attached together. Mm. But it's still it's still a little bit shaky. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it. Well, who, who will it be for? Who's really going to buy this, do you think? This is a product in search of a <laughs> audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you know who knows. Right. <laughs> they really want to have integrations for it to make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And what they demoed is a detachable keyboard that if you put on top of the lower screen, if you're using it, you know, like you as like you would use a laptop. Mm -hmm. If you put the keyboard on the lower part, it invokes a toolbar on the top part that's not covered by the keyboard. The way that they demoed this was uh, for an emoji selector. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a way to build into Windows something like the touch bar on MacBooks, but just quite a lot thicker. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the touch bar on MacBooks, it's, what, a centimeter thick? So it's something that if they can design something for it, if they can integrate it with Office, there might be a business use case for it. Mm -hmm. Getting third-party developers in on this might work. And they've already been experimenting with this, and they've been working with Asus. In 2018 at Computex, Asus unveiled a notebook that, instead of bolting you know, a screen to the top oh, of the top. lid, they took the touchpad and put a smartphone display on it, a mm -hmm. 1080p smartphone display, 5.5 inch. So they bolted that there. And that actually makes a lot of sense because you're already using that sure. as the touchpad. So they've been working with ideas about how to make these type of second screen toolbars. So this is not that huge of a jump for them. Mm -hmm. It's just how are they going to make this as a foldable device worthwhile? Well, and then I guess the, the and in time too. Is, yeah. is there a, a timeline set out or? They're saying holiday 2020. Okay. This is something that when you look back at Courier, this, mm -hmm. this is something they've been working on for a decade and they're still not ready. Right. So that, there's a lot of things that they didn't really articulate mm -hmm. in the presentation. The first of that is what the availability actually looks like. So it's going to be available to consumers, they say, in holiday 2020. Mm -hmm. We don't know if they're sitting on a stack of these that they're going to give out to developers to build out you know, any type of integration that, say, Adobe would need Mm -hmm. for Photoshop, if you're trying to do Photoshop on this. And we don't know really what the specs are. We don't know how powerful it's going to be in terms of, can it really do the processing required to run Photoshop? And that is not a lightweight application by any means. Mm -hmm. So it's finding the right use case for it is going to require people outside of Microsoft mm -hmm. to figure out what that is. And I've never seen that be a winning strategy on any product. So that, that is something that is going to be a challenge for them. So 
maybe what they displayed at mm -hmm. the presentation is more of a developer kit, mm -hmm. more preview hardware, like you would see for going back to Courier and going back to Xbox, maybe this is something that's just more of a developer kit that these are made available, you know, about a year in advance mm -hmm. for the video game industry. But for smartphones and for tablets, this is, this is an industry that changes every six months. Right, easily. So having this much lead time, it looks a little bit weird, mm -hmm. but if you remember the Windows RT tablets, the, the Surface RT that ran this cut down version of Windows that only used the don't call it Metro apps that weren't really ready out of the gate. They had a few hundred applications within the first three months. And that, that kind of failed to launch just because it, the software wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is Microsoft's attempt to learn from that issue. There's a, uh, Steven Zanofsky has a blog called Learning from Shipping or Learning by Shipping. And he still talks about the launch of Windows 8 and what type of process that was to build that within Microsoft. And I think there's a lot of lessons to learn from that. And maybe that's why they're doing this the way that they are. But it's just a very peculiar rollout mm -hmm. of a product for a company that tends to play really close to the, for a company that plays really close to the vest as Microsoft does. Oh, we'll have to just wait and see then. Yeah. And of course, lots of things that are coming out of the Surface event, and we've got you covered on all the details on Tech Republic and ZDNet. Thanks for watching.